testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. Yeah, we've been having some technical difficulties here. So, this is probably take 183. Hopefully, this is the one. I think we got everything fixed here. Uh oh. Um, I think we're headed for trouble again. I'm not seeing this thing move anymore. What's happening? Okay, it was stuck. Now it's working. I, jeez, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, what am I downloading? Because I don't download anything. I don't do apps. Man, I guess academics is working full time out there. I mean, ain't, didn't Fortnite make some type of adjustment or something? <laughs> Man, go play Fortnite. Anyway, what's up? Those of all who are back, thank you for supporting the page. Don't forget to hit the like button and hit the notification button so you can get notified of all the updates that's going on on the page. Now, the Easy E daughters are cat fighting with each other again. Um, it's a weird situation here because what's weird about it is the fact that EB, who's like 28, and Re, who's like 27, um, these two are just one of like the six or seven kids Easy E got. <laughs> And those we don't know we got are just out there, you know, and Megan Thee Stallion comes out with a new song called Girls in the Hood. And she uses a sample from Easy song Boys in the Hood. So, you know, Megan has already made her claims of what she's going to be. And she's trying to be a pop artist, you know, just, just horribly, you know, just destroying classic songs and making them sound ridiculous. Now, So when the song comes out, it was getting a lot of responses, but the sample thing is what brought the daughters to the forefront. So, E.B. Wright and them disagreed on the situation going back and forth as when this came out, you know, uh, I think that was Ree who came out and was like, I'm straight bothered and I don't really like getting bothered, but I'm not bothered by, you know, dope artists that's making these dope songs and pieces of merchandise and all this stuff. But as long as y'all paying respects to my father, you know, I'm with that 100%, right? But what I'm bothered by is the people behind the background, the people in the background who's pushing the OK button and saying, Go ahead and drop it. We'll co-sign it. And we write off on it. Because he got kids that y'all won't write nothing off for. And they've been trying forever to get clearances for their father's work. And said, look, you know, I got siblings that want to be doing so much stuff in the, you know, the likeness of my father. But we can't unless we get some papers thrown on our table. A cease and desist this, a cease and desist that. This is crazy. Somebody tell me how can we can stop that. Because we want our daddy's legacy. We do. So E.B., who's the daughter you've seen the most of, she always dresses up like Easy e and do those side-by-side -side photos. That's the daughter of, that he has with Tamika. Now, Easy got about 50,000 kids, but really in life about seven. Some don't even want to be, you know, some of the kids don't even want to be on, you know, out there on the internet like I'm Easy E's kid and doing that. But the others, 
Like you saw Baby Easy E, he was in the Only If You Want It video. So, that's one. But another thing was, E.B. is just like her mom, Tamika. She was raised by her mom. She didn't really know her father at all. So, she barely remembers him, if anything. He's a memory. So, her interactions have been mostly a, you know, just the memory and the legacy of what he was. So, she grew up knowing that she's Easy E's daughter. So, she's always been out in the, the open, the most vocal person you probably have seen. And, you know, she's into the business of everything. So, whenever there's a business thing going on, you normally see her, like, with the Straight out of Compton. They're trying to get a documentary going, you know. So, she's always been somebody glued to the legacy from that standpoint. So, Evie, you know, got wind of all this and saw the rant and got involved. You know, and she came right in and said, please don't, do not get me confused with Ree. I don't know her. My father didn't know her. You know, it's really strange to me that every time there's something that has to do with my dad that comes up, she's the first one running to the internet to speak up as if she's the spokes spokesperson for my father or family. It's really, really effing weird. The only person who has been fighting and still fighting to this day for my father's estate is me and my mother. She went on to say she supports Megan's new single and anyone who samples or pays tribute to their late father. <coughs> so What's clear is she wants to make sure she's separated from that because you don't want to step or burn bridges from people who has definitely sampled your father's music, which would definitely do something for the catalog. So that's money that they can get off that. You don't want to stop people from doing that. You want to keep that encouraged and want to send out an olive branch of, hey, I'm willing to work with you guys. So that was more political business and not less and much less volatile because she's looking at a bigger picture. You know, they're fighting to try to get a documentary made and they want to go down that route. So Reed sees this and comes out and says, it's so sad that your own blood can get on the internet and try to bash you because they're jealous and envious of you. Aren't you like 30 years old? Reese says to her, you know. Her rap name is Remarkable. She says, every time I get posted by a blog or I'm on television or my music is doing well, you get sad or depressed or mad. You and your mama. What's up with y'all? I'm your sister. We we ain't family, but we blood. So, E.B. said, you know, I'm no longer entertaining the, the drama in public. So, I'm, she's out. She's like, that's it. I just said what I had to say. I'm done. Don't come to her for another comment. Responding back to Ree. So, let that be that. Well, right now, uh, it's a lot of things happening and transpiring that a lot of people don't understand, you know, um, about rights. First of all, Evie has grown up to be like her mom. Tamika was always in a, you know, opportunist. 
While Easy was out here making these babies, she knew about what Easy was doing. But she was the one that got to stay in the house. The one that got to live with Easy. So Tamika knew her position. She knew what she was doing. She wanted to run the business. She wanted to be in charge. You know, she looked at what Kim was, the ice cube. She wanted to be Kim. Now, somewhere down the pipelines, her lack of business sense and lack of fortitude allowed the company and the business to fall out of her hands. She had it all. She had Bone Thugs and Army. She had multi-millions of dollars. But instead of knowing how to utilize what little materials they had with Easy e and with others from Ruthless Records and other people who wanted to collaborate and do things to tribute him. She was trying to put a stronghold on everything. And when you try to do that and try to dominate everything and, oh, no, we want to get this for that. And people like, you know, we want to honor him. But if you're trying to, like, stick us for every little cent, then forget it. You know, we're out. And who's there to recruit new talent? You know, and then you got his other kids that they they so afraid that the children and by you having so many kids and you're famous and they spread it out all over the place. You know, this can become a major problem down the road because when it's a, an estate, everybody's coming in to get something and they don't all know each other. I used to joke all the time I wanted to have kids in every like country. In India, I'm going to have a son named Kadir Modi. So every time I travel, I won't have a problem. Because I'm like, anybody from my kid would be royal blood, so they'll end up running the country. So <laughs> every time I show up, they'll just let me in. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm having problems, son. You got to let get me through this visa. I'll be like, that's Kadir Modi, my son. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm going to Italy. That's my son, K1 Miliani. <laughs> I mean, that's my father. Let him through. <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's very entertaining to people. Oh, in Japan, I'm K. I have a son named K. Yen. <laughs> I had a name for every place, a name for every place. For my like, uh, and they all were sons. Never thought about the daughter. <laughs> they were all sons. <laughs> oh man, crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, the way my mind thinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's what you think about when you're, you're like in your teens. It's as crazy as that sounds, it's funny. <laughs> K-Yen. <laughs> oh man. I cracked myself up. Listen. Don't forget to subscribe to the page. Hit the notification button. I think we went over that. Uh, my cash app is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. And yes, we on Spotify. And for those who didn't know, we got the Carcino for Life podcast on Spotify. It's a lot different, a lot of stuff you don't see here on the podcast. We on Spotify, Apple, Google, Podbay. We on like all the platforms. So just letting you know, I'm out. Deuces. <laughs>